Greetings. We're finishing up Genesis chapter 33, starting at verse 18, and working through the first half of chapter 34. And Jacob came safely to the city of Shechem, which is in the land of Canaan, on his way from Paddan Aram, and he camped before the city. And from the sons of Hamor, Shechem's father, he bought for a hundred pieces of money the piece of land on which he had pitched his tent. There he erected an altar and called it El Heloe Israel. Now Dinah, the daughter of Leah, whom she had borne to Jacob, went out to see the women of the land. And when Shechem, the son of Hamor the Hivite, the prince of the land, saw her, he seized her and lay with her and humiliated her. And his soul was drawn to Dinah, the daughter of Jacob. He loved the young woman and spoke tenderly to her. So Shechem spoke to his father Hamor, saying, Get me this girl for my wife. And Jacob heard that he had defiled Dinah, his daughter. Now his sons were with his livestock in the field. So Jacob held his peace until they came. Then Hamor, the father of Shechem, went out to Jacob to speak with him. And the sons of Jacob came in from the field when they heard it, and the men were grieved and very angry, because he had done a disgraceful thing in Israel by lying with Jacob's daughter, a thing which ought not to be done. But Hamor spoke with them, saying, the soul of my son Shechem longs for your daughter. Please give her to him as a wife, and make marriages with us. Give your daughters to us, and take out daughters, take our daughters to yourselves. So you shall deal with us, and the land shall be before you. Dwell and trade in it, and acquire possessions for yourselves in it. Then Shechem said to her father, and her brothers, let me find favor in your eyes, and whatever you say to me, I will give. Ask me ever so much dowry and gift, and I will give according to what you say to me. But give me the young woman as a wife. I think the first one thing I want to observe is that this altar that he builds, okay, he's worshiping God, but look at the name he gives the altar. El Elohe Israel means God, the God of Israel. Mm. He's got faith, but as we said in the last video, his faith seems to be losing sometimes to his fear. Here he's in, he's gone in the opposite direction from what he told his brother. Mm -hmm. He's now setting up camp, and now he wants to own land in a Canaanite Dwell. city. Yeah, and I mean the whole point of his trip was to go back to the land, to his proper place. That's where he's supposed to be. Yeah, but and he's been told by God to go back. He has, so he's disobedient, and that might show up in the name he chooses for this altar. El mm -hmm. Elohe Israel, God the God of Israel. The mm -hmm. covenant name is missing again, and we've made the point over and over again mm -hmm. that in Genesis, the, the placement and selection of the names is not just, well, let's use this name for variety. No, mm -hmm. it's for very deliberate reasons, and this may be, an, mm -hmm. uh, this may be giving us the idea that uh, he's in one of those lapsed or backslidden states again, mm -hmm. and that's played out in this story the way it works out, right? First of all, what what's this girl who's probably only around 13 years old? Mm -hmm. What's she off on chaperoned meeting she, me, meeting the women of Canaan? Mm -hmm. Why is she unchaperoned? Yeah. That the and even even the uh, all of the kids are under 20. Yeah. I mean, I think when you read the story, you sometimes think in terms of them being older, at least the brothers being Mature. older, but they're also young. Young, and it turns out in the next section, hotheads. Yeah, a bit wild. And w this story has a disastrous ending, but the beginning has to be put on the, on the, mm -hmm. in the laps of the parents. Yeah. Where's mom? Yeah. And what's mm -hmm. Jacob doing? Where are the brothers, her brothers, sons of Leah? Where are they? Mm -hmm. Well, they're out doing their job, but yeah. she's apparently on her own. And allowed to, to uh, go wherever she wants. And we, if you put yourself back in that time, you know, even in other countries today, there are places where a young woman won't go off wandering by herself. She will 
realize that, th that there's an element of danger in doing that. So you definitely get the sense that they've got some of the ways of Yahweh. When they make this comment mm. uh, in verse 7, he has done an outrage. He had done an outrageous thing in Israel by lying with Jacob's daughter. For such a thing must not be done. Well, by the standards of Israel, mm -hmm. now going back to the days of Abraham, so three generations, we remember Abraham was told that by God Himself that God had entered into a relationship with him, so that he might teach his descendants to mm -hmm. do to do the ways of Yahweh, to walk in the way of Yahweh. Yeah. Well, they are to a certain extent doing that, but mm -hmm. but obviously not very well here. Yeah, so th their their outrage is, is also connected with what they've been hearing, I'm sure, from their parents about, you know, why their father came there to find a wife mm. instead of wherever he was before. So this, this tradition has been built up. They, they recognize that. But they're also observing or you see playing out in their character the same traits as their father. And mother, apparently. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think the two comments we have here from uh, Morgan and Barnhouse are about that. Mm -hmm. But but just the thought that they've caught the religion of Yahweh, but but not well. So, as we said in the last video, they, they all seem to exhibit some faith in this God that's yeah. unique to them that the Canaanites do not have yeah. at all. Because the Canaanites are mostly Canaan, uh, mostly Hamitic culture, they're mm -hmm. from the culture of Shem. That's why they send the the steward back in chapter twenty four to find a, a mate, a suitable, suitable mate. Wife. Yeah. And we can see that the pain of of Rachel, or rather Rebecca, later when she sees that her other son Esau is intermarrying with women who she doesn't approve of. Yeah. So that's all in the family. But yeah. here is a lapse, a serious lapse. Of and the, it's, it's almost pointing to the possibility that they will just lose it all by marrying into the Canaanite hmm. families. Like, this is the situation. And yet, when you read the whole account, you, you, you get the feeling that, that the Canaanites are, are acting in a certain degree more honorably hmm. than, than Jacob and his sons. Because they're saying, we we want, they're not just using her and tossing her away. They He wants her as a wife. They want to intermarry with the whole family. Yeah. Yeah. So they're thinking in, in practical terms for their culture, this yeah. is going to be a beneficial thing. By the later standards of Yahweh, that is the law of Moses, what happens next shouldn't happen at all. Mm -hmm. This this price that, that Shechem and his family and the whole town mm -hmm. have to pay for the rape of Dinah is yeah. way beyond the the uh, yeah. eye for eye and tooth for tooth standard of of, yeah. of the law. So I think it also speaks well of the fact that the Bible portrays people honestly. So it's it's not they're they're not pictured as completely villainous. No, the Canaanites here they're they're pictured as a young man wanting a young woman. And the family make, willing to make amends to yeah. some extent for what has happened. That's yeah. right, yeah. To show some some level of respect for them. It doesn't work out very well. Here's what Campbell Morgan has to say about all of this. Mm -hmm. And the blame he wants to put, not on the kids, but on the parents. Mm -hmm. He says this tarrying at Shechem was undoubtedly a mistake. The word spoken to him by Jehovah in Padan Aram, commanding him to return, had been quite explicit. Return unto the land of thy fathers and to thy kindred. And there can be no doubt that he ought at once to have continued his journey, at least to Bethel, the place where God had first appeared to him, and made his covenant with him. Mm -hmm. And in all probability, the full terms of the command intended that he should have passed immediately to Hebron, where Isaac was still living. There is nothing more perilous than to stop short of the place to which God is calling. And the story which follows is that of a sad and tragic reaping from this halt. Mm -hmm. And now we've got a quote from Barnum. Barnhouse? Oh, yeah, Barnhouse, sorry. Uh, Dinah had the traits of her mother, 
as does your daughter, and she reaped the harvest of her parents' sin. Leah connived with her father to impersonate Rachel. Jacob had perpetuated a similar impersonation upon his blind father. Dinah, the daughter, brought shame and humiliation upon them and caused the massacre of many men. It is the duty of parents to see that their young people are in proper surroundings and under competent chaperonage. All normal young people wish to see and be seen, and Dinah was no exception. She was 13, living in a tent and seeing a town nearby. She naturally wanted to go where there was life and movement. So we thought to link to a video we did on parenting. These kids don't just hear what you say, they watch what you do. So this one is the second of a series that I did on parenting. Making sure your child hears the whole counsel of God. See you next time. Mm -hmm.